Hi, it's Carrie. In today's 5-Minute Friday, I wanted to address another common problem that I see in published systematic reviews, which is referring to the PRISMA statement ambiguously or referring to the PRISMA statement for incorrect processes. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples. But here we are on the PRISMA statement website. PRISMA is an acronym for the Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses. It came out in 2009. It was updated in 2020. And it has a number of extensions, which are here. Abstracts, acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, complex interventions, Kosman, diagnostic test accuracy, economics, equity, harms, patient data, moxibustion, network meta-analyses, protocols, scoping reviews, and the search. So the most important takeaway for this video is that you walk away knowing what you can find on the Prisma website. And we're going to come back to the details here in just a second. What I've done, and I hope you can forgive me for borrowing sentences without citing them, but I'm not intending to showcase the reviews that these came from. But what I've done is pull out some sentences in systematic reviews or evidence synthesis reviews where Prisma was used incorrectly. So here's one. We'll just go through them one by one. I could have made pretty slides or we can just do it this way. Let's do it this way. The search utilized PubMed and Web of Science databases following Prisma guidelines for paper selection. Now, if you had to guess what a reporting guideline might say about paper selection, you might be right. It doesn't say a whole lot. So this, in my opinion, is an incorrect way of referring to the PRISMA statement. The systematic review and meta-analysis was conducted and reported according to the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analyses guidelines using the Covidence platform. So they're halfway right. They reported it with PRISMA, but if they conducted it, well, they did conduct it, Really, they need to have other guidance because as we'll see in just a minute, the PRISMA checklist and the whole PRISMA statement really doesn't give you a whole lot to go with on methodological conduct. This systematic review was conducted in accordance with the preferred reporting items for systematic, systematic reviews and meta-analysis guidelines. Again, it's just a shout out to PRISMA without seeming to understand what PRISMA is. How did you conduct your review? with the reporting guideline. So it's just kind of silly. And here I've redacted a few things where there may have been identifiable information. We included all the studies that discuss the topic according to PRISMA. I mean, that's just thrown in there like a side thought, like a afterthought. We did this, oh, according to PRISMA, right? Using the PRISMA guidelines, we conducted a systematic review to compile an inventory of um, things on this topic. So we'll look at it. We'll see what it tells us about doing that. Using the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analyses methods, we conducted a systematic search of papers up to, and there was a date there. The PRISMA guidelines were used to conduct the literature search. Okay, it doesn't tell you a whole lot. There's only one item on the PRISMA guidelines about the literature search, and then there's an extension for searching. A comprehensive search of major databases was conducted according to the PRISMA guidelines. Again, an incorrect use of the reference for PRISMA. A literature search was performed according to the 2020 Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses guidelines. Again, it doesn't tell you how to search. So let's look at two that had it right. They're down here. These two had it right. This systematic review was reported following the PRISMA guidelines. Great, that's all we needed to know. And in fact, that's all the PRISMA guidelines really do for authors is tell you how to report your review. And then this one's a bit more detailed, but it's still perfectly wonderful. A scoping review was conducted following the JBI methodology and reported according to the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analyses, the extension for scoping reviews guidelines. Perfect, that is all we need to know, and they've referenced it correctly. 
So again, let's revisit the Prisma website and we'll look at the Prisma 2020 checklist, which is available in different formats. And here we have our checklist, 27 items, uh, just really asking you to report something as simple as calling it a systematic review. But a lot of people say that they searched with Prisma. The only thing that Prisma has to say about the search is right here on item seven, present the full search strategies for all databases, registers and websites, including any filters and limits used. And the irony here is a lot of the reviews that are saying they did everything with Prisma don't even do this. They don't even do this bare minimum number seven of submitting their search strategies for all databases. They might give you some keywords. They might say that they search PubMed, but they don't give you the full search strategies for all databases and everything else. Um, so that's, that's the problem when you're referring to something without having read it or understanding what it's used for. And you can see other items here. Sometimes I see people, authors say that they extracted data with Prisma or they did risk of bias with Prisma. And you can see, it's really just asking you to describe what you did and how you did it. But hopefully you're looking at some other methodological guidance for that. And then just for the heck of it, let's go back to the statement website and we'll go to the extensions. And like my bias is in searching. I like to search. I'm interested in the searches. So let's look at the Prisma search extension, which so many people say they're searching with Prisma. And this is the search extension checklist four categories information sources and methods your search strategies all of them whether or not it was peer-reviewed and how you managed your records so again if you read into this in any great detail you would see that it's not actually providing you guidance about how you should search it's providing you guidance about how you should report your search after you've searched which hopefully you consulted an expert for because it's not something that you would necessarily need to be able to do, but you need to know who to ask. And this is why. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.